Okay, well, good afternoon. And it's with a great honor that we have on the jury with us this year, Viviana Durante, and that she's got a very, very full and busy week, but I'm happy that she's taken even more time out to have a little chat with us here today. So welcome, Viviana. Thank you very much. And Viviana, you've had quite, you came here, your first connection with the Prix de Lausanne was when you came here as a competitor. Yes. <laughs> and how, how was that for you? Um, I'm sure a lot of the students here feel like I felt slightly nervous and apprehensive. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, I would say nervous, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and when you came here, then how was your... Um, the priest sort of changed sort of every year it's different and what were your what did you dance? I did um, a solo from can you remind me? Was it this sleeping beauty? Mm. <laughs> da 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 da. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I did a contemporary piece as well. Uh, Mary had a baby it was called so it was a good contrast between the two. Uh, and that's what's wonderful about um, showing off two sides of what you can do. And it's important to, you know, to show that difference as a dancer, how you can interpret different things. And then when you came to the Puy de Lausanne, correct me if I'm wrong, you were already a student at the Royal Ballet School. Yes, I was, yes, I and, was. And so how did this affect your career then? I mean, you were already in the Royal Ballet School. Yes, it it. It, it is a good experience to be here and to see other dancers uh, that do what you do, love what you love. Uh, so it just added... To, you don't realise at the time when you're tiny, but um, information that you take in when you're here, but then it sort of stays with you. And then at some point, you will, it, you will put all the pieces together and um, you will understand. Yeah. And, and what made you move from Italy to go to the Royal Ballet School? Because you were quite young when you yes, left home. Yes, I was. They, they, I was um, Galina Samsova and Andre Prokoski saw me in Italy um, at the uh, Teatro dell'Opera di Roma. And they suggested I would go to Royal Ballet School uh, because they thought it was a very good school and it just would give me, would bring out my talent. Um, so that's how I went when I was ten and a half. Oh, and how was that to adapt? <laughs> That's quite young to, to change countries. How was that? It is. It's, it's difficult because I didn't speak any English. But, you know, thank God what we do is that we all speak the same language. It's like we're all here speaking the same language. We mustn't forget that. Um, but I didn't speak English. Um, so at the time, and the only time I felt at home, it was when I danced. I felt as if I was, I was fine. I, I didn't feel homesick when I was dancing, but um, it, it was difficult also, you know, the food, <laughs> it was difficult for me to, this is my little one. <laughs> I think we have a future dancer here. <laughs> Do you want to sit on Mama's lap? Yeah. Okay, he'll sit next to me. Quiet, we have to talk, okay. So it's, um, it was difficult. It was difficult to be away from my family. Um, to the dancers that come from abroad here, you know, we, we do, we, we, you know, we, we understand and we feel um, your, you know, maybe your anxiety or your fears of being here and feeling alone, but don't feel alone. Yeah. And then upon graduation from the Royal Ballet School, you went straight into the Royal Ballet. I, I, I was one year at the Upper School from White Lodge, five year, years at White Lodge. I went one year at the Upper School, and, and at 17, I got into a Royal Ballet Company. Yes. Oh, wow, and how was, how was that the transition for you? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a shock because suddenly you're not a student anymore, but you're required to be an adult and look after yourself and... Uh, to be able to turn up to the rehearsals and know where you're going and what you're doing. But it's, it's kind of different now in the, in the education system they do at the Royal as well, for instance, because they, um, they prepare you. There's more of a preparation for life, for the, for the person, uh, which is very important to do so. Uh, so one of my messages to all you know, the students that are here, 
you know, please keep in contact with what's going on in the outside world of ballet, in the arts, you know, in the theatre, in the opera, in what it films, whatever it is, and what's happening in other company, in other schools, because it, it, you, one does tend to just live, you know, for, for whatever you're doing, the school that you're, you're at, and you need to be prepared that when you go out there as a professional, it's quite different. Um, you need to look after yourself in all sorts of ways. Mm. So for me, it was a little bit of a shock. I wasn't quite prepared, but then somehow I, I was okay. <laughs> All right. I know you had a, a wonderful career at the Royal Ballet. You had a chance yes. to dance some beautiful roles and really yes. develop relationships with choreographers. Absolutely. If you had to pick out some, some of the highlights. Well, w one of my biggest ones was when I took over one of the girls, that, one of the principals that injured themselves in Swan Lake. And I was a soloist and I was doing signets that night. And she injured herself and... Anthony Dow, Sir Anthony Dow, the director, came into my change room and said, would you like to step on the stage and carry on with the Swan Lake uh, doing the third act? Uh, so I said yes, even though I've, I'd never, I wasn't rehearsing the role at all. Uh, something inside me made me say yes, because this is how much I love being on the stage. And so I took over her, so that was a big thing, and then I was made a principal straight after that. Oh, wow, that's quite so, a... Yes. Just jump in and go for yes, it. Yes, yes. Oh, Sometimes wow. it's quite good not to think too much. You just, you just, you just go, because don't forget what you do, is, you know, what you love doing. Is, you, you do love it. I know sometimes it's quite nerve-wracking being here, but don't forget the reasons why you started ballet. You want to perform, no? You want to tell stories, you want to... So. Mm. And now, for example, in Swan Lake, how did you feel compared to like white swan, black swan, ah. how did you prepare? Um, white swan and black swan, it, it, they're like different, the two different sides of all of us, I think. We have a soft side and a sort of slightly more kind of stronger <laughs> side. <laughs> so uh, this, this, this helped me in a, what I said to be interested in the outside world of ballet. It's, it is it's very, it, you need to... Um, absorb experiences, you know, watch things, and that's how you can make a role like that live on stage. Um, just by living simple feelings that you would go through during life. Uh, but in, 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 certain, um, in certain countries that I've danced, they, they do, they also, as a ballerina, you could end up doing just the white swan or just the black swan. You don't necessarily, you know, have to play both. It is good to play both, but sometimes it's also quite a relief to just play one person all the way through. And, <laughs> and yeah. of, the, of the black and the white, did you have a favorite or did it change through moments of your career? Or I guess it changed through moments of my career. It's snowing outside. Sorry, I just thought I'd tell everybody. <laughs> it was just a moment of like... <laughs> No, um, yes, it does change. I mean, performances, that's, that's the beauty of a live performance. It does change on, on the day. Like, anything can go wrong or a lot of things can go right. Um, and that's the beauty of it. So my Swan Lake, my interpretation of Swan Lake, of course, it changed through the years. I did my first one when I was 19. So I'm sure I was quite different at the time than, you know, when I did it later on. But... Mm. And I believe also in your repertoire, you dance basically all of that. You've danced Aurora yes. and Swan Lake and Giselle. And how would you prepare for such different roles, like for a Juliet or for a, was it a very different preparation or? Um, you, you, you also prepare, you know, with the help of a very good coach. You, you, need, you need somebody to, that you aspire to. You need somebody that guides you through a role such as Juliet, for instance, which is... It is technical, but the main thing is to tell a story. So you need a little bit of guidance in, in the artistic side, uh, on the acting side of, of the role. But you can also do a lot of research yourself, obviously. Like I said, by going to see things, read, read books, and you know, try to take in as much information as you can. It's important. And was there a favorite role of yours? Manon. <laughs> Yeah, Manon. She's quite a complex character, so you could indulge yourself into that and um, kind of 
play it slightly different every night as well, yeah. And also I, I like the, the sad ending, not that I like sad endings, I, I don't, but on the stage, I like to play the heroine that then, you know, dies and... <laughs> And you also had the chance to work on the role with Kenneth? Yes, I did. How yes. was that? It was great. I mean, he, it was like working with a theatre director on, a, on an act, on, on a play. He it, it was, it, it just feeds you with uh, information about story. It's, it's all about storytelling. So every step that you do, you know, has a meaning. Um, and even through class, you know, we've been watching classes or solos that you do, you know, don't forget, even a plie, there, there is a reason why you're doing a plie. Or sometimes you can make your own story up of that. It, it, it helps. It helps that it doesn't just become a step, uh, which can be quite limiting and, you know, sort of a little bit boring. <laughs> yeah. And, and now also during your, your career, you, you worked with some fabulous partners. Yes. Was, is there was a special relationship or bond or how was... Yes, I... I, I worked a lot with Irek Mukhamedov, uh, so it, was, it, it is important to have a strong relationship with your partner in a sense of, you know, an artistic strong relationship because you, you can understand each other, you can, you can let go of certain feelings, you know that he has a, a reaction to your action. Uh, it is an important way of telling a story, even in an abstract ballet. It is important to have that kind of, to establish the relationship with your partner. And you can do that, you know, in, in the studio. Uh, you can talk about things, you can rehearse, and, it, and it, there's, if there's a problem, it's quite good to even talk through the problem. And yeah, I, 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 loved, I used to love dancing with Iraq. He was, he, was, he was great, great artist. Mm. Yeah. And then also, you worked with many contemporary choreographers as well. And how I, was that for I you? I worked with Wayne McGregor, that was my first. Uh, real contemporary <laughs> when he did his first pas de deux and he danced as well uh, with me so I was on point and he, he was dancing with me it was, it was incredible it, it, I was lucky to, to do his work with him so for me he was like a mirror you know I was kind of trying to um, do what he does so well which is quite extraordinary uh, his choreography when you see it on him it just fits him perfectly uh, so I, 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 I did enjoy that. And it's, it's very important that you do work with different people, uh, different styles, and it just makes you, um, it makes you a dancer. Mm. Yeah. And how were you during, during your career? Did you ever have to deal with any injuries? No, I was lucky never to be injured. Wow, that's... Yeah. And is it, did you do luck or was it really, were I, you a hard worker, like everyday I, training mm, or cross training? Or? I, I used to do a lot of Pilates exercises. It's good to look after, you know, your, your body and what you eat as well. Um, so I used to do Pilates. It's good to eat well, to keep healthy. It keeps your mind healthy. Um, I, I, I used to, yes, I've always been a hard worker. I think if you love something, if you have a passion for it, it becomes your life. So um, you eat and sleep that, which is fine as long as, like I said, you keep, you, you, you're aware of what's happening as well around the world. So, yeah. Wow. And then how was it for you? Was it your decision to retire or was it something you'd thought about for a long time or how was that transition for you? Well, I, 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 I was spending a lot of time in Japan by then. After, when I left the Royal, I went to ABT, American Ballet Theatre, where I was guesting with them for a couple of years. And then after that, I started working in Japan and in Italy and in Germany. And then it became sort of, I, I was kind of traveling too much. Um, and I wanted to, it, it is healthy to have to have also a life outside the ballet. So I met my wonderful husband who's here. Somewhere. <laughs> yes, and your little boy. <laughs> and, um, and decided to just, you know, focus on, on, a, on, my, on having a family, which I was, I was missing. It was the only thing I was missing in my life. Um, and I did that, and now that my little one is four, quite independent, Tells me to go to work in the morning, <laughs> so I, I I'll, I'll be back. I'm back. And where do your well, inspirations lie then? Well, I have. Um, I would like to direct a school or a company. 
I have some work coming in September, but I, I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not allowed to advertise it that's yet. That's fine, that's fine. With the Royal, with the Royal in London, so. Oh, exciting. Yeah. And personally, do you have more interest like to coach or to teach or a mix of both or? A, mi a mixture of both. Uh, I, like, I like coaching, I like, I like to choreograph. Mm -hmm. I like, um, I do have sort of ideas. Um, of certain styles that I like, and um, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll, I'm, going to, I'm testing the water on a couple of things, and then see how they develop. Oh, but that's yeah. great! You've got like a broad range of interests. That's nice. Yes, that's I good. do. I do. I do. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I mean, it's it's great to have you back here as well. It's lovely I mean, to be here. And yeah. to have you here, because you, you've also been back at the Prix before on the jury, yes. you've been coaching before, That's it's right. wonderful to have you yes. be so generous with your time. Oh, absolutely, no, I love it. It's a, it's a wonderful place, it doesn't feel like a competition, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like this here, it mm. just feels like a really huge family, and we're all sort of here to help the mm -hmm. students and to guide you. Mm -hmm. And so. how is it going so far? This year, have you seen some yes. candidates that you're really rooting you're for? Brilliant! And it's so exciting, so exciting, and it was so exciting today to see the contemporary. It was lovely to see that you know the difference from the classical to contemporary, and how you know some dancers obviously are more natural, a contemporary, or you know as as mm -hmm. a mover, like a much more of a free mover, and some some dancers are more like a classical, have a more of a classical style, and this is absolutely brilliant. It's fantastic. Lots of companies and lots of wonderful schools out there. So, yeah, place for everybody. Great. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful to have you here giving, giving of your time for yes, this week. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure I would like at this point to open up to the floor. I'm sure there are some questions that you would like to ask Ms. Durante. Yep. Um, what was your most difficult role to like, portray? Yes, Sleeping Beauty. Mm. Sleeping Beauty. You need to find like an inner balance when you do Sleeping Beauty. It's like an inner calm. It's almost like a form of meditation through ballet. Um, because it's, it's very tech, technically it's very hard, but you're also playing a role. You're telling a story. So the combination of the two is quite, it's quite hard, yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember you as a dancer, I was always amazed because I thought it never appeared like you had a weakness. You were flexible, you could jump, you could turn, you could act, you were dramatic. Some people you sort of recognize <laughs> a certain trait. You seem to me that you could sort of do it all. Was there an aspect for you that you were like, oh, I wish I could have yeah. this or that, it was a real challenge? When, when, when I see people do 32 fuetes and they do double, 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 triple, I have to say sometimes I think, oh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't. And you know, and I'm really, to say to the students who are here, you know, it's, it's not the most important thing. It's, it's, it's a lovely thing to see if you can technically do that, but it's, it's not that important. I mean, it, it doesn't make you, it doesn't make you a dancer. I don't think mm. Margot Fontaine could do <laughs> double, double. You know, it's, there is that as well. It's good to have very good technique, but it's not the most important mm. thing, you know, to be a ballerina or a big principal dancer. Mm. So. Very good <laughs> advice. Do we have another question? Yes, I, I mean, to be fair, it, it is much better for a dancer if something is created on you. It's like putting on a dress that suits you. You just put it on and it fits you well and you feel great in it, you know. If you're doing something that's already there and you're trying to learn the steps and things, I mean, I suppose it comes a little bit on how it's taught to you. If it's taught with flexibility of, you know, you could do slightly this or that, then yeah, looking at the technical side or maybe even the choreographic aspect of it, then, then it's, it's okay. But if some people say, is this, and maybe some dancers find certain steps, you know, quite challenging, uh, then I, I didn't, I, I never liked that, no, no. Because I think it's quite restricting on your performance. Mm -hmm. um, and it's slightly unfair as well not to have, you know, flexibility, yeah. Do we have another question? Oh, the Judas tree. Oh, it was quite, a, quite an experience. 
I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll go forward before I tell you about the Judas Tree, the rehearsals. Well, no, I, I'll tell you about the rehearsals. They, Kenneth, when he told me he was making a ballet called the Judas Tree, he said there was going to be about a rape, um, a rape scene, and it was going to last 12 minutes. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not sure I was <laughs> going to take that. Um, then he reduced it as it went along. It was sort of quite shocking. And then, and then um, I mean, it, it, like I said, it's just great to work. I was lucky to work with Kenneth Macmillan. It was, I, I just, I, I personally love theatre. I've always been inspired through theatre and ballet, of course, you know, ballet as well. But it, when you worked with him, he was all about what you were telling through the steps, you were telling the story. So uh, we worked a lot um, on the interpretation of who she was, the role of the girl. She was a little bit of um, Mary. <laughs> um, and then, and then at other times she was just a girl working, uh, walking towards like um, a big building where they were making well, there were, you know, sort of, there were a lot of builders there, and she walks in with a miniskirt, as it was quite controversial. It brought out this huge um, dialogue about, you know, was it her fault that because she was wearing a skirt, or was it, you know? So, it, yeah, I, I don't know. There's quite a lot of children here, but it's yeah, it's quite a strong subject, and um, he, he he sort of wanted to touch different aspects of it, and. And then Irek was, sometimes he was Judas, or sometimes he was just, you know, the builder. He was kind of there, and, and it, it, I mean, it's interesting. To work with somebody like that is so interesting, because you can tell, through a story, you can tell so many different things, and then you, you as an audience, you can absorb, you can understand whatever um, you want from it. And so, it, it, yeah, I mean, obviously it was amazing. It was, it's, it's a great ballet. We, we did it in, um, in Germany when we were touring with a company and we got booed. It was my first time. I, they, were, they were just booing the ballet and Kenneth was on stage with us taking a bow and he, 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 they were booing us. They were going, boo, get off the stage like this. And Kenneth, which was amazing, he was holding our hands and he just said to us, just keep smiling and just keep bowing and... Um, to stay on the stage like this was, was quite an amazing moment, how he reacted to that. Yeah. And so. in the creative process with Kenneth, yeah. was he someone who would work with your ideas? Like, would you improvise yes. on a theme? Or was he, did he have everything set before? No, how no, was no, 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 improvise on a theme. I think there's, I mean, for me, it, it is, it, for me, it's great choreography. If you can leave the gap to... Um, improvisation as well. So you work with a choreographer. It's much more interesting and there's a, and you, and you give more to, to the role, to the ballet. Uh, if it's, I, I've never been a great lover of somebody just coming and giving me steps, but you know, as I said, the theater is very big. It's a big world, so lots of different styles and yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you, just to ask your opinion, I mean, you hear a lot of people today saying, oh, ballet's dying. It's become nothing but spinning on YouTube or tricks, where it's becoming mm -hmm. a circus, it's losing the artistry. What is your personal mm -hmm. view? Yes, mine is a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. um, something great is happening that we're sort of looking after more the, you know, the body, uh, sort of warming up properly doing cardiovascular exercises before a class and, you know, the diet and, uh, which is great, it's great. We have to look after all that side of us, of course, but just, we must not just forget about the art, you know, the, the artistry. What we do is, is art. So it's, it's wonderful to look after yourself like that and it's absolutely necessary, of course. But one must not lose um, what it is that we do it is an art form, we're not gymnasts. So, it, I, I do feel sometimes, um, if we're not careful, it can veer off into, it can tilt. Yeah, there's always a balance, isn't it? So. And was there ever in your career a role that you dreamed of dancing and you didn't have the chance, or a mm. choreographer that you would? <gasps> yes, 
John Lewin Meyer. I've never danced Miss Julie. It's one of my favorite stories. I've never, I've never danced his work and I've never danced Miss Julie. Yeah. Shall I do it now? <laughs> I'm sure you could. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh, wow. Do we have any other questions from the floor? Yes. Very important. Yes, of course, of course. It was Iraq, Mukhamedov was my favorite. I think there has to be an understanding. It has to be a mutual understanding of what you do. And also there has to be like an emotional rhythm between the two of you. Um, so it is a, you, you do need to you know, get on with your partner. You need to have the same understanding. You need to have the same thread of, you know, where you're going. Um, it, it is absolutely important, and I think it's, um, it's good if, if you're, something is not working emotionally. Because something technical, you could always make it work. It's just a matter of practicing it. And, but if emotionally you're not, it's not working, I think it's, it's kind of important maybe to say, and, you know, it's important maybe for both of you to, to be dancing with other people. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there was one performance when disaster struck. Did you ever have an embarrassing oh, yes, moment or a disaster? <laughs> That's a shame, my brother is not here. We were in Washington opening with Swan Lake, with the Royal Ballet. And um, third act, I was doing the Black Swan, I was doing the White and the Black Swans after the Fuetes and the Coda. Da -da, when you come on, I just slipped bang right on the floor in the first night. It never happened to me, but I just got, it was Iraq, he got me up and, went into Narabesque and we got applause. People started applauding. But I think it's to do with, it depends where the accident happens, which country. <laughs> I, think, I think some audiences are slightly more strict than we were in Washington and they were very kind to us. To, they just gave, encouraged us then, you know, it was fine. And so, yes, I, 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 I don't know, maybe I didn't put enough rosin or I'm, I'm not sure, I just slipped. So it was slightly embarrassing, yes. But you jumped right back up as I a trooper and got on with it. I jumped straight back up and I went into Narabesque and they started applauding. So I thought, oh, that was nice. Shall we do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Every night, bang, like this. No. <laughs> well, it breaks the nerves. I mean, once yeah, it's gone totally. wrong, then you see people, they yeah. relax, they open yeah. up. I mean, that happens. Yes, totally. And this is for the students here. Yeah, it's, it's, it is okay. I mean, be careful, obviously, not to fall and hurt yourselves. But it is okay if something goes slightly wrong. You know, the beauty of it is how you, you, you react to that, how you, how you make it look as if nothing has happened. That's what live performance is about. It's actually quite exciting. You know, I mean, perfection, we, we, you know, we, we want to make things perfect, but it doesn't, it's not something that's sort of, it's still. You, you sort of work towards it all the time. So you are allowed to make mistakes. It's fine. And then, so, uh, in your nature, were you, did you have to deal with stage fright, or no. did you? L no, you mm, I love being born on stage. for the stage. In fact, I'm, I'm surprised I'm here talking to everybody because I'd <laughs> rather be on the stage. And <laughs> well, it, it is hard to speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I used to love being on stage. So I, I've been on stage since I was a six, six-year-old girl. Oh wow! So, so you're just born. Yeah, born I for like the stage. being on the stage. Yeah. Well then. If you have a last little bit of word of advice, we have some of the candidates here, or yes. your wish for the dance world, where would you like to see it going? No, I'd just like to say, really, really enjoy the experience of being here. We're all here to help you and to guide you. And any questions or any, any, anything you want to talk about, we're here to help you. But, um, you know, enjoy it, really enjoy it. Because it's, it's, you know, that's why we come and see the performance, to, to see you enjoying yourself and so really really good luck to everybody who's here i'm really looking forward to it actually you're all so good <laughs> great well i think that's a very nice note to end on and i would like to thank our public and i would like to thank from the pre from all of us we have a little something here and more a little presents. something else oh my goodness more presents ah thank you very much Thank you, well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Viviana. Thank you. Thank you very much.